Roger, you promised me chainsaws. Looks like you are ready. I uh, again, I am ready, but I wanted to talk to you about a couple things. Every year, 36,000 people are injured by a chainsaw. It's got to be one of the most dangerous tools a homeowner has got. It has to be. You're gonna, whatever you're going to use in the garden, it'll never measure up to this. So every time I use it, I say, this saw can hurt me. All right, so we're talking safety. and yep, we've you discussed, got a bunch of stuff. Yeah, because we've discussed the gear before, and uh, yep. I remember the lesson well. Safety glasses, yep. in addition to a helmet with a face mask, and definitely hearing protection, in this case built in. Gloves, you love to see used, and then the chaps. I will never forget this lesson. We took a pair of jeans and put it on the mannequin, took the saw, and it went right through clean as a whistle. And in contrast, when we do the same thing with chaps, I mean, it literally shut the chainsaw down almost instantly. It cut through, but then it grabbed that, uh, what was it, ballistic fiber? Ballistic fibers, and it stopped it. I have not used a chainsaw without chaps on since I saw that. I'm glad to hear it. All right, so that's the gear. What are we talking about today? We're going to talk about safety features on the saws themselves. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's a gas or an electric. They all have the same features. All right, so what onboard features are we looking at? Okay, what we're going to look at right here is called a chain break. It follows Newton's third law of physics that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Yep. If you hit the tip of a saw, it's going to kick back like that. Huh. And we want to stop that from hitting anyone. So that's interesting. So when it's forward like this, that's an operation mode. Yep. And you're saying that the kickback puts it into this brake mode? Right. So you just protected your arm and your forearm from getting cut. But what's actually going on when we'll it goes into brake right mode? Take a look right here. You'll see. This turns the chains. This is the main sprocket that goes to the engine. Okay. So on top of it, we put this, and it actually slides on. And when you go to lock the handle, yeah, it tightens right around this and stops it. So this right here moves, which moves that, that. tightening this, which will just stop that right down. Exactly. So that is you got the built-in brake feature. All yeah. right. Now, the other thing we want to look at is down here. This is called a chain catch. Huh. If for some reason this chain was going around and derailed, it could come flying back. So it, this is designed to grab it before it comes back at very you? Very simply, it gets wrapped on that and doesn't get back to you at all. I'd like to know that's there. And then here we have locking triggers. This is great because you can take and lock it down, leave it, or take it and move it, and then activate it again so you can use the saw. So it requires two steps, actually, right? If you just try to push the trigger, that's not going to work. Yeah. To press one, then push two. Yep. And that's great because if you're carrying the saw, you don't want to actually. There's trigger no way that. it can it can activate. Right. You got to be in position one. Two. Now that is good to know that these features are built into the saws. Yeah. One more thing I like people to know: if you're not comfortable using the saw, hire a pro. If you're not comfortable, don't use it. There you go. Thank you. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.